What is up everyone? I hope you're doing well. My name is Matt, this is Made with Matt, and on this channel we take Figma designs and convert them to React Native. So today we're going to be building out this photo sharing app UI. So it's pretty cool, we're going to learn about reusable components. Um, each one of these cards is going to be a reusable component. We're also going to learn how to add in navigation. So here when we click to the next page, we have uh, a new page that shows up. Um, we're going to learn how to use a flat list to render a grid view like this. And we're also going to learn how to add in a bottom sheet. So we can see uh, an alert here when we click it and we can close it. So if you didn't see the design video when we created this app design, you could check it out in the link below. Um, so you'll see this file, you can make a copy of it and play around with it as you see fit. But we see that we have the albums page here with all the albums. Then we have an albums edit page with the bottom uh, sheet and then a shared album. And if you want to go explore, we also have a design system in here with all our typography, our colors, and some reusable components. We have all our images that are used throughout the app here. And lastly, the template that we'll be following. Started, I've created this starter template. So this starter repository on GitHub, uh, you could find the link in the description below. So go check that out. The reason I did this is that it's sometimes tough to get projects up and running. Um, so in here, I have all the dependencies right here using Expo, um, navigation, and for our bottom sheet, um, just to, to make it easier on you guys a bit when setting it up. And we also have a bit of starter code in app.js, um, which I could explain, but it's really not that complicated. So let's go ahead and do that. So copy the big green button here, or sorry, click it, and then copy this um, HTTPS link by clicking the little clipboard here. So we could do that. Now, if I minimize this and go to my VS code, what I could say is git clone and then paste in the link. And now that's going to create a new folder over here with our app. And if you're seeing a bunch of other interesting names here, check out my channel for a bunch of other videos that I've done. So once that's done, you can reopen VS code in the actual folder itself. So I just reopen it in the photo sharing app UI. And now you could open up your terminal. By the way, I'm on Mac. I did that by clicking command J. And now just type in LS to make sure you're in the right place. So we should see all the folders here. So first thing we'll do is we'll type in npm install. And what that's going to do is it's going to go install all the dependencies that we have here that we're going to need for the project. Once that's complete, we'll see a node modules folder appear, and we could just type in expo start to get the app running. Now, if you're new to expo and the npm command before did not work, then what you'll need to do is look up install node.js on Google and click the first link here to download node.js. And that's going to automatically set up npm on your computer. And the next thing, if you don't have Expo installed, it's super simple. You just type in this command here and you should be good to go. So I'll just zoom that in. If you're following along, type in this command in your uh, command line or terminal um, and then Expo should be set up. So we'll close, close those. Now I'm going to be running this on my um, iOS simulator. But if you're using your phone, whether it's Android or iOS, you could go ahead and scan this QR code and it should open up on the Expo Go app on your phone. Since I'll be running it on my simulator here, I'll just type in I to open it on iOS and it's going to go ahead and open it up. There is a bit of extra setup if you want to use a simulator, whether it's iOS or Android. Um, so just look that up online. There's tons of Expo documentation on it and I might also make a video uh, in a couple weeks about that. All right, amazing. So we've got it open. It says, let's do this. Now I'm going to open up the app.js file so you guys could see what we already have there. And I'm also going to increase the font size here so it's a bit easier to read. Um, so to get started, we have a bunch of imports here. These are just any import we need to get the app running. Um, so let's jump down to this section here where we actually create 
the app itself. So what you'll notice is that we have an if statement here. Um, and if this comes out to true, we're returning a loading screen. Now, the reason we're doing that is because using Expo or I mean, just building apps in general, um, if you're using a font that comes somewhere other than your computer itself, it might take some time to load. Um, and if you run the app before letting it load, it's going to crash the app because the app doesn't realize, um, or I guess the app doesn't see that these fonts exist yet. So I got this from the Expo documentation, which you could find right here. But basically, I'm just preloading the fonts before the app finishes loading. And then once it loads, it returns uh, what we actually want it to return, which is this page here. Now, I'm also doing the same thing for the icons. So we're using feather icons from Expo vector icons. Um, and that's why you'll see this code here and this code here. And you could find all of this in the documentation link right here. Now, the last thing we also have is this default theme. So my theme um, and this I just passed in to the navigation container, which we'll continue setting up in this video. Um, and basically what it does is it just kind of sets the background to our background color um, and all the other colors to the default theme uh, that iOS or Android phones use for navigation. So now let's go kind of exploring as to what we have in here. So if you go in the assets folder, we have data, images, and themes. So in data, we have uh, the album page data, avatar images, and the background images. So the background images is basically uh, just IDs with the background and the image of a bunch of backgrounds that we're gonna be using. So if you open up the images folder in here and you go um, in here, you could see image one is this dog, two, and so on. Now, if you go into avatar images, you'll see all the avatars that we'll be using. Um, and if you're wondering where all of these were found, they were found on Unsplash and they're all in the Figma file in the link below. So that's cool. Um, yeah, we have all the avatar images here. Uh, and then for the album page, we just kind of exported uh, some data where we have ID, the title of the album, the user, the background image, and then the avatars with it. And we just repeated that a bunch of times. Um, and I pre-included this just because it's a lot of work to get all of this set up. Um, and I wanted to help you guys just kind of get straight to it as fast as possible. Now, the last thing that we have is uh, a themes folder. So if you open that up, this kind of just follows the um, design that we have in Figma. Um, and it has all the text variants, so H1, H2, the bodies, the spacing, and the colors. So since this video is really to just get everything set up, the first thing we'll do is let's close this assets folder. We're going to create a new folder called source. And in here, we'll create another folder called components. And in that folder, we'll create two files. One is albums.js. And the second one is going to be shared album.js. Now, the last thing we'll also create is in this source folder, create a new folder, which we'll call navigation. Oops, navigation. Awesome. So in the albums page, we'll create the simplest possible component for now. So I'm typing in LFRC um, because I'm using an, an extension, uh, which you could look up. I think it's called, uh, let's see, it's something. React simple functions, simple functional React snippets. This is what I'm using. Um, and it lets me create this really fast. So we'll call this albums and we're going to return a view with text saying album page. Now we're going to need to import these two. So let's import view and text from React native. And now let's add some styling in here. 
let's put flex of one, justify content, center and align items, also center. And what this is gonna do is it's just gonna put everything in the middle of the page. Now we could copy this and do the exact same thing for shared albums, or sorry, shared album. Um, so in here, just change all of these to shared album. And the way I'm kind of selecting three at once is I'm holding down the option key when selecting them. So we'll call this shared album, save that. Um, and now we could open up navigation, create a new file in here called index.js. And this is where we're gonna set up the navigation for our app. For the navigation, we'll be using React Navigation. Um, you could find it here, reactnavigation.org. Um, if you want, you could go read the docs and get started like that. But since we've already got our dependency set up, it's all there. So the first thing you'll have to do is go to app.js and at the top of the file, the first thing we'll do is import React Native Gesture Handler. And we need that for the um, stack navigation, which we'll be using. So save that. Now open up index.js. And once again, LFRC to create just a functional component. Um, and you don't need the extension. You could just kind of type it yourself as well. We'll call this navigator. And up here, we'll start importing some things we need for the stack navigator. So first thing, we'll need to import the create stack navigator from at react, na react navigation slash stack, that one there. Um, then the next thing we'll want is to import these two files, so the albums and the shared albums. So import albums from components and albums, and then we'll import shared album from components shared album. Now in here, we'll return a stack dot, oh, sorry, actually, before that, we need to create our stack navigator. So const stack is equal to create stack navigator. So that's kind of just creating the stack navigator, which we can then throw in here. So stack dot navigator. And then in here, we'll have some screens, so stack dot screen. Um, and let's close that off. So let's give it a name. Name is going to be albums. And then the component is going to be the albums component. Now we could copy this and paste it under and now just change everything for the shared album, shared album. And then you could save that. And all of this, like the way we're doing all this, you could find in the documentation from React Navigation that we're following, um, but it's pretty straightforward. You just have your navigator and then inside you have screens. So let's jump back to app.js and get everything working together. So instead of this view, let's do this. We can delete that and throw in our navigator. So navigator, um, and here in the suggestions, you'll see one source navigation index. That's the one we created. You could click that for it to auto import, which is really nice. Otherwise you could just import it yourself, um, but we'll just throw it in like that, save it. And now we should see the albums page here. Awesome. So if we want to navigate to the shared album, we're going to need to add a button in here. So let's go pressable. And we'll say pressable with a text inside saying, click me. Now this pressable on press, so which is basically saying like when you click it, we want to do an anonymous function and we'll say navigation. Sorry about that, navigation dot navigate and then in here we put the name of the page so shared album now navigation won't be defined if you save it and that's because we need to add it in here so it's kind of like passed down as one of the props so we could save that and now if we click boom 
we get brought to the shared album page. Awesome. For this first video, we created the navigation and we also got everything set up. Um, so this video was really just to get you all comfortable with what we'll be doing. Now in the next video, we'll start building out the UI for this albums page, which is going to be really cool. We'll learn tons about reusable components. So we'll create this entire card here as a reusable component. We'll also create these avatars here as a reusable component. Um, and the styling to get all of these to work properly can be challenging. So I'd highly recommend you check this next video out. We'll also be creating this little line as a reusable component that you could use anywhere. Um, and yeah, and then we'll be, we'll be piecing it all together. So what's great about this is if you have projects later on that you want to use components like this, you could refer back to this code um, and just plug them in. So I hope you enjoyed this first video. Um, stick around for the next few. They're going to be even better. And let's get this app made. Ooh.